Hey, good morning. It's good to be back with you here on a Tuesday breakfast with Jesus. Hope you're doing well. Hope your day's starting off on a joyful, happy, wonderful note, even though we're <laughs> in this weird weather pattern that's just gray and dingy. And boy, it was tough getting up this morning. I don't know about you, but <laughs> it's like some days it's like, what? No, can't be morning already. <laughs> And, and those of you who are really very sharp, uh, you know you're not seeing double. Uh, today's broadcast has the same title as yesterday. It, one of these things, you know, that, that you, 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 if you're not careful, these little things will just throw you off. I w completely, I was unable to change yesterday's title i wanted to change the title of yesterday's broadcast to be the real deal because that's what it ended up being right <laughs> i don't know what's going on with facebook but i tried every which way but loose you know to uh to get in there and change all of that and it wouldn't let me i'm like what are you kidding me <laughs> and and you know years ago that would have ruined my day it was like oh i can't believe it <laughs> Yes, I've grown. I am older and wiser and just not letting that happen anymore. So yes, today's broadcast is the same title as yesterday's. and It'll be that way until who knows when. <laughs> so, all righty. Good to see you guys, though. Thank you for joining me this morning. Jane and Jackie, uh, Linda, Shalom, Susan, and Maria. It's great having you guys along as we are continuing our journey here. We're just really, I guess, beginning chapter 12 of um, the Gospel of Luke. And there really is kingdom wisdom here, <laughs> which that was yesterday's title too, but it's today. Anyway, um, yeah, lots of good stuff here. And um, wow, uh, the fact that, that we've been given such a rich deposit of the Father's wisdom, you know, through Christ. I mean, it's just, oh, <laughs> I love it. Anyway, let's dive in here um, and see where we are. So uh, I think we pick things up at verse 4. Yes. Um, he says, And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that have no more that they can do. But I, I will warn you whom to fear, Fear the one who, after he is killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. And, I, you know, it's important for us to make the point, because I don't know who listens, you know, who will watch this. I know that for, for most of you that I'm aware of who are following this program, you understand that when Jesus uses the word fear here, that he's not describing, you know, some uh, abject terror, uh, quaking in your boots, you know, just screaming in, in, in uh, you know, in fear that, that God's going to somehow blast you. Um, that kind of a picture of God is actually what the spirit of religion wants you to think. You know, the spirit of religion always paints God as some kind of harsh judge who, it, you know, the merest uh, infraction of his law will, uh, you know, execute some punishment on you. And so uh, that's, that's not what Jesus is talking about here, right? Obviously, in his day, with the level of persecution uh, that was there, people could become extremely, you know, concerned and, and afraid to the point where I can't do what God's called me to do. And there are many places in the world where it's still like that, where Christians basically are undercover because if they were to admit it, they would be martyred immediately. But in, in this case, of course, he's talking to his disciples. He's talking to these guys that he has appointed and commissioned to carry on his work and so, you know, he's saying, look, I know these Pharisees and these other guys and uh, their um, partnership with 
Pilate and, and the Roman government, I know that that seems uh, like an impossible situation to overcome, but don't be afraid of them because they can only do so much. You know, if you're going to be afraid, and the fear here, of course, is that is that wonderful sense of awe uh, that, you know, you have that, yeah, you know, it, it's just, you're just stupid if you don't acknowledge who God really is, that that's, you know, he is able, <laughs> you know, to determine whether, you know, someone is going to be uh, given eternal life or not. And he's made it clear that that choice is ours, right? It's not that he's arbitrarily saying, well, you're going to heaven, you're going to heaven, you're going to hell. No, he doesn't do that. The idea here is know that his rules, his laws, his kingdom establishes what's possible. And for us, we, we know clearly that accepting Christ, right? Putting our trust in Jesus and his sacrifice. That's all that is required, you know, for us to, to know that we've been forgiven and that we can now fully obey what he's called us to do, you know, in this life of following Jesus and being a disciple. All right. So, you know, he's trying to contrast these things. Um, and, and it's interesting, you know, in the Greek, <laughs> He, it's not even that he's using this as a warning. It's more like, don't be afraid of these guys. I'll show you who to be afraid of. You know, if you if you want to have fear, you know, be be afraid of the one that can that can do far more after you're dead than those that can only kill you. Right. So that's kind of what he's saying. And and here's what I love about the way Jesus shares this wisdom here in this passage, because he's going back and forth between things that, you know, religion would, would want you to be terrified of God. And he balances that out and says, no, 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 that's not the picture I'm painting. I'm not trying to give you a picture of God the Father as this harsh, demanding, vindictive, revengeful God, you know, who who's going to at, you know, the drop of a hat, you do something wrong and you're, you're toast. No, because look what he says next. He says, are not five sparrows sold for two cents? And yet not one of them is forgotten before God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear. You are of more value than many sparrows. So see, he takes now this whole area of fear and brings it into the right context, which is that of a father who is so loving, so caring that, you know, the, the birds and the animals that are here on this earth who have been abundantly provided for by him, you know, we look at that. He says, look at that, you know, are you worth maybe a little bit more than some birds, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so, you know, he says, do not fear. Talking about that, that wrong kind of fear. Fear that is, that is rooted in a picture of the future that is not in the heart of the Father, right? The things that make us afraid, and we're talking about that, that bad kind of fear, that bad kind of anxiety and worry and all of that, those things are driven by ideas and, and mental pictures that we have of our future. And it's a negative picture. That's where the fear comes from. Here, in this case, he's talking about, you know, look at the birds and how they are so well cared for. Not one of them is forgotten before God, right? And yet we can go through these things where, God, where are you? Where, you know, everything's crashing down around me and, and, and you're, you're not doing anything, right? We can have the wrong perspective, the wrong picture about the outcome of some situation in our life. And because of that, we fear. And Jesus here is bringing us back to the right mindset, which is 
No, your heavenly Father knows you and knows your situation even better than he knows the fact that there are these birds out there that need his his provision, right? You know, he said he knows you so well that he could tell you right now how many hairs are on your head. And that's a number that's constantly changing, by the way. All right, for some of us not in a good way. You know, I think they what do they say? You you lose on average a hundred hairs a day. That sounds like, oh my gosh, why am I not bald? <laughs> well, it's probably because we've got millions of hair hairs that that you know are there so a hundred that's like pff, not even a drop in the bucket right so but that's the thing he's he's bringing across here he says yeah you are so valuable that he knows you down to the number of hairs that are on your head that's how intimately involved he is in your life and i'm like oh all right I got to remember that next time, you know, all the wheels come off and <laughs> things get crazy because that's the truth. That's why Jesus can say, do not fear. You are of more value than anything. Okay, let's make that clear. The value that he places on us equals the price that was paid to bring us back, which is the life and the blood of his only begotten son. So there you go, right? So next he goes into a, another bit of wisdom that, again, is used by the spirit of religion to strike terror into the hearts of so many Christians. He says, uh, And I say to you, everyone who confesses me before men, the Son of Man, shall confess him also before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. Now, Christians read that or hear that being spoken and immediately it's like oh, did I ever deny God did I deny Jesus right that that's what religion will do to you it will it will immediately cause you to question did I ever do that or you know what you know is that something that I'm now in that condition where I denied Jesus because I, I disobeyed or I did something. Well, who knows, right? We've all, we all have history. <laughs> and so we've all done things that we're not pleased about or, or uh, we're, that we're ashamed of. And so religion takes this thing and basically wants to paint this picture again of, of God being, you know, very, very judgmental concerning, uh, you know, everything that we do. It's a real performance-based kind of a thing, Right. And he's not talking about that. He's talking about people who refuse to acknowledge who Jesus is. I mean, they're just set in their position. You know, Jesus, what? He was in, you know, maybe he was a historical figure. I'm not even sure about that. Whatever their posture is, he's talking about folks like that who are, who've made a, a you know, a settled decision that, you know, Jesus is not who he says that he is, didn't do what he said he did, you know, all this God stuff and Bible stuff, it's all a bunch of nonsense. People like that, you know, they they will unfortunately have the consequence of, as Jesus says here, uh, denied before the angels of God. In other words, during in that last day of judgment, Jesus will simply say, Depart, for I never knew you. I never knew you. You never entered into this relationship that I opened up through my, my sacrifice and my blood. So that's what he's talking about. Now, on the flip side of that, right, think about this. You, as a born-again son, daughter of God, Jesus, he says this now, right? He says that... He is confessing us before the angels of God. That's an ongoing thing. It's not, this is now not just talking about the, the judgment day, right? There is this thing that Jesus is saying, representing us, right? It says in, in Hebrews that he ever lives to make intercession for you and I. And that, what does that mean? That in some way, he is bringing us and our name before God before the angels, 
right? The angels are given as ministering spirits to us, to, to aid us and guard us and be part of the things that we're called to do. And let me tell you, we're in a season now where we are all going to become way more aware of angelic activity than ever before because it's part of our heritage. It's part of what we get as sons and daughters. And so this, you know, this right here is like, whoa, that is good that I, I am that well represented in heaven by Jesus. You know, that's what he's doing. All right. So um, from there, he goes on to, again, talk about uh, people who, who don't, have a relationship with God through Christ. He says, And everyone who will speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him. And here again, we see people who just freak out, thinking, did I ever blaspheme against the Holy Spirit? Did I ever commit the unforgivable sin. You know, I, I've counseled many people over the years, and this is one of the most devastating lies that the enemy uses to rob people of their peace before God because they will obsess over this, you know, did I do it? Did I do it? And the bottom line is, if you did, you wouldn't care. See, the, the, the mere fact that you would be concerned about whether or not you did it indicates that you haven't done it, <laughs> all right? I know that sounds a little convoluted, but when you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, basically saying that the Holy Spirit, you know, is either non-existent or is uh, a manifestation of the demonic realm, however that, you know, is, is understood, you are cut off from the Holy Spirit. And so you no longer have a conscience that would be concerned about, did I mess up? Did I commit this unpardonable sin? So the fact that you're concerned about it indicates that, no, you didn't. <laughs> okay, so that's important. And maybe you'll run across folks in your own life that struggle with this, and you can give them that uh, bit of wisdom to help them understand that, no, you didn't because you just, you wouldn't care. It would be a non-issue for you if you had, okay? And so you know, this was done, unfortunately, by some of the leaders, the Pharisees and whatnot, when they said, oh, he casts out demons by Beelzebul, you know, which was another name for the devil. You know, say, okay, those guys, they can't be forgiven because they refuse to acknowledge the work of God here on this earth through the Holy Spirit. And so it's a very real thing, but not if you're born again. Never have to worry about this if you're born again. All right, let's make that clear. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> and then this last bit here is just so, so cool. Um, in verse 11, it says that, And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, do not become anxious about how or what you should speak in your defense or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. And so here, you know, again, he brings this back into the context of relationship. You know, all these, these uh, warnings, these uh, things that he's, he's speaking to them to be mindful of, to be aware of, right? Again, I love the way he balances, goes back and forth between that warning and the, the fuller revelation of how it uh, really speaks to the nature of our Father, right? It, yes, He is someone that can uh, determine whether someone goes to heaven or hell, but again, it's their choice. But he, He's the one that sets that standard in place, but yet He's a Father who knows you so well. So back and forth, right? And here... He deals with the very natural kind of situation where, okay, I am now being put in a situation where I have to talk about my faith, talk about 
this relationship I have with God or to defend myself against people who are, you know, coming against me with, with persecution and, and, and arguments and, and whatever other kinds of things, right? Listen, most of us are not comfortable speaking in public, right? And even more so when we get put in situations where we're being challenged about our faith. And if it was up to you and I, right, we'd probably do a horrible, horrible job <laughs> at all of this. But thankfully, whew, thankfully, we don't have to depend on our smarts in this thing. And that's what he's basically saying to these guys. Hey, look, you know, this is going to happen. You're going to be challenged. You're going to have to be able to give a defense uh, over what you believe, what you know, what you've experienced, right? Don't be afraid. I, it's like he's saying, provision has already been made for you in those situations. You have the Holy Spirit and he's a genius. He knows exactly what to say, how to say it, when to say it. And we can come into these situations resting in that truth. I mean, I'll never forget one of the most, the wildest. <laughs> you're you're going to, I don't know, should I even share this? I guess I will. Um, you know, many of you know that I've had the privilege of, of uh, traveling to Brazil to do mission work, right? And for a number of years, I was um, part of a ministry that would go into uh, a certain large city in Brazil. And we would schedule specific times during that trip to actually go and minister in the red light district where all the brothels were, right? And we would, yeah, we'd set up our equipment, we'd worship, we'd, we'd sing lo um, God's love songs to the, the prostitutes, you know, and they could hear us, you know, in Brazil, they don't, close their windows because it's a very warm climate, you know, so I can just imagine what it must be like, you know, what it must have been like for these women to hear songs that, that, you know, communicate the heart of the Father for them, that, yes, you know, uh, you are my princess, you are my, the apple of my eye, things like that. We would, we would prophetically sing toward, you know, these, these buildings where these women were and just, uh, anyway, getting back to, to this, um, during one of these times, I had the occasion to speak with a, with a German guy, a guy from Germany. And so I said, so why, why are you here in Brazil? <laughs> this guy was so gross, so crass. <laughs> well, I came here because there's a lot of good fill in the blank, okay? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, thanks for being honest. And I said, so, you know, what, what's going on in your life? What is it? I don't care about that. I'm just here for this. So I looked at him and I said, so you're telling me that the sum and substance of your life can be described in an act of sexual intercourse. There's nothing more about you. Whew. That, that was a Holy Ghost word because you could see, you know, there, his face changed. It was only for a moment when he realized the import of what had just been asked him. But he wasn't willing to humble himself. And so he just said, ah, forget you. And he walked off into the brothel. Okay. So, you know, but these are the kinds of things when you are in a situation where it's like, whoa, what in the world am I going to say now? He's faithful. And he will give you things that you could have never thought of, right? He, he'll give you stuff that maybe won't even make sense. But you learn to trust him and that when that thought pops in your head, okay, I'm, I'm going to say that. And, and so we, we have that assurance that <laughs> when we're in those situations, Jesus says, don't be anxious, don't be afraid. I've already made provision you're already going to have whatever it is that you need. But, and you know what the key thing is here? Honestly, we've got to maintain this heart of love for people. 
if we allow their behavior to get us stirred up, to get us angry and, and, and upset over what they're saying and, and whatnot, it makes it harder. It makes it harder to hear what the, what the Holy Spirit wants to show us and tell us because now it's all about me and my response, my reaction to this person and what they've said and how they said it, how dare they sort of thing. So, you know, coming to that place where we can step back and, and, and okay, yeah, <laughs> I see where you're at. And I, I feel badly that that's where you're at. But Jesus loves you. Papa loves you. I'm going to love you. And I'm just going to share with you whatever it is that he gives me. <laughs> I know it's, it's a process. We, we don't get there overnight. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about having that settled assurance, that love that, that we've experienced, just expressing that and allowing the Holy Spirit to give us the words that this person that we're talking to, they absolutely need to hear. They just maybe don't, they don't know it yet <laughs> until they hear us say what God is saying to them. So I hope that's helpful. hope that's encouraging for you as you are out and about doing the things that, that you do. All right, let me say good morning to the rest of this amazing breakfast club. Let's see. Um... Where do we leave off this morning? Bernadette and Allison, Patty, Donna, good morning to all of you guys. Um, Ryan, how are you? Uh, Bill Brown, dude, it's been a long time. Yes, sir. Hope you guys are, hope you're doing well and mm, interesting. And Sharon, wow, this, this is like old folks home. <laughs> If you're watching, Sharon, it's been a while. Hope you're doing well as well. My gosh, it's people I haven't seen for a long time. Um, Linda, Jennifer, Danny, Nicole. Wow, everybody's just jumping in here. Bridget as well. Thank you, guys. I appreciate so much having you along. And those of you that are sharing this with your friends, thank you so much. It's really you that's helping me to, to connect with folks that might not otherwise know what we're doing here, our little breakfast club uh, weekday mornings, right? And if you want to reach out, feel free. Please send me an email. Send me a Facebook message. I'd love to hear from you if you've got questions or anything that you'd like to talk about. So thank you again. Look forward to getting back with you tomorrow at 830 Eastern. All right. So get out there and love somebody today. All right. Thanks so much.